Ho ho ho! Bonjour and welcome to What the Damas! Today we are going to be talking about Système International, which is a French greatest invention of 17th to 18th century. The invention so great that it is used by everybody in the world today, except for those Americans. First, let me tell you about the history of the French system, or also known as International System. These two great amazing men, right here on your left, it is Monsieur Michel, he is amazing. And on your right, Monsieur Delambre, also amazing. These two men, they wanted to find a, a universal measurement for everybody, but specifically for the great French Empire. So they sit down with the coffee and they drink coffee and they think, how do we make it so that everybody know what the measurement is? Let us start with the length. And they think, oh, why don't we make it like this? If this is here, this is right here, is earth is where we live, terre, as we call it in French. Then maybe, maybe if you look at the North Pole, the North Pole right here, and then if you look at the uh, equator, or equator as it is known in the not so interesting English language, and then we measure from here to here, we measure, but then we divide this by a million, which is also a French word that we, the French, invented. So we, the French, decided that we need to go and measure the distance between North Pole and Equator and divide it by million, which is a French word. I mentioned that already. But because we, the French, we do not like to work, we decided to only measure a very small part of it. We decided to start in our favorite city, Dunkirk. Dunkirk is in the north, north of France. And then we decided to measure distance from here to Barcelona, which is in Spain. And that gave us, that gave us, and the distance here was a thousand kilometers, both of which are French words. Now to commemorate this finding, we decided to make two long platinum bars. And platinum is the most expensive metal in the world. And this, this was one, and then this was the other. And one of them was exactly one meter in length. And the other was exactly one kilogram in, in weight. And these two bars, they are still in France. Even today, you can go and check them out. But unfortunately, the measurement has changed uh, since then. So the ma one meter that we, the French, found has been changed today. And we, the French, are so, so sad. But not sad enough, because we still have the platinum bar in our country. And we have the history to prove it. Vive la France! Ho, ho, ho! All right, so let's talk about this part in your chapter. And this is international system. So essentially, the units used in the IB. Now, one thing I'm going to tell you right now is that forget about your American units. Forget about feet. Forget about yards. Forget about uh, what else? Uh, miles. And forget about everything else that you will hear from Americans. Unfortunately, none of it is relevant in IB, and you cannot express these units on the test. You have to express units in what's considered to be international system, and that's things like meters for distance, or meter square for area, or meter cube for volume. So that's right here is distance. This right here is area, and this right here is volume. Kilograms for mass seconds for time, and that's S, meters per second velocity, or basically speed. And these are the units you'll see the most, but there's some other units that are allowed. Let me just list some of them as well. So in some questions, you can also use minutes and hours for time as well. So not just seconds, but also minutes and hours for time. You can use grams or tons, which is T, for um, for um, weight, and that's on, on top of kilograms. You can also use liters for capacity, so that's usually when you measure in liquids. 
Some questions may have hectares, which is also a measurement of area. And one of the questions in your books actually deals with that as well. So that's hectares. There's, it's spelled like this. The only acceptable temperature, or actually the only two acceptable measures, but the preferred temperature is degree Celsius. And that's temperature. But you should also know that there's another degree called Kelvin, which starts basically at absolute zero. So zero, if you've never done physics, zero Kelvin is equal to absolute zero, which is, I'm going to give you a Celsius value for this, um, which is basically minus 273.15 degrees Celsius. Uh, in other words, 273 degrees, 0.15 degrees Kelvin is the same as zero degrees Celsius. And that is something you should also be familiar with just in case. Now the test usually provides you with a conversion for these units, so you don't have to memorize how to convert them and conversion is provided for you, but you should still know how to convert one from another. I haven't listed all of the units, There's some of them are, um, uh, you can find them in your book, but they're not as common, like for example, for pressure, and for things like nautical speed, nautical mile, those are not very common, but you'll usually get a conversion rate, how to convert from, let's just say, nautical mile to kilometers. Now, what's important, though, is for you to realize um, that you need to be able to convert anything to anything if you're given that particular table with conversion rates. So, for example, let's just try to convert a few of these things. So let's take a look at this simple example. It's example 2D, 4D on page 47 in your books. And it's asking you to convert 5,840 kilograms into mm, tons. So if you remember how to convert ton uh, kilograms into tons, basically one ton is 1,000 kilograms. In other words, you have to divide this number right, right here by 1,000. And you'll get, you can do this on your calculator or you can just do it in your head. And what you'll get is 5 tons or 5.84 tons and that's the answer for this question now this is a relatively simple question let's try something more difficult another question on that page asks you to convert 60 kilometers per hour into meters per second this is actually very very common converting kilometers per hour into meters per second is so common that there's actually a pretty cool trick or a pretty neat trick to how uh, on how to do this whenever you're converting kilometers into meters all you have to do is, without calculating what kilometers and hours and seconds is, basically, you, all you have to do is divide by 3.6. So that's going from kilometers per hour to meters per second. Basically, you're going from the big to the small, so you're dividing by 3.6. If, however, you're going from the small, which is meters per second, to kilometers per hour, you're multiplying by 3.6, so you're making it larger. And the answer here will be approximately 16.7 meters per second. That's the answer. Um, so converting kilometers per hour to meter per second is very, very common, so make sure that, um, just to save yourself some time, you remember this little trick. So multi uh, divide by 3.6 or multiply by 3.6. And one thing you really should remember as well is the conversion units. So these are the units that come before the uh, the numbers or before the other units. And what I'm talking about is the little letters, like kilogram, milliliter. You have to make sure that you understand how they're written and what they mean. So for example, let's look at the ones you have in your book. So for really small things, you have milli, uh, micro, and nano. And these are the ones that are very common, so you should definitely know them. Milli is written with a small m followed by a unit. So for example, milliliters. So that's a, uh, and this equals to one thousandth, one thousandth of, uh, of a unit. Uh, or in other words, if we write this in scientific notation, it's uh, one times 10 to the power of minus three. Micro is written with a Greek M, I've, which is something I mentioned in the previous video. Oops, I'm gonna write this in red actually. Uh, and it looks like this. It's, it looks like a M with a long uh, leg in the beginning. And let's just say this is going to be micrometers, which is something that's very common in science. And that's, um, so you add three more zeros to this and that's basically one one millionth of a unit. Or, in other words, one times 
10 to the power of minus 6. And the last one you should know is nanometers, and that's N, M. And this is like when you're talking about, let's just say, um, in computer sciences, you'll hear this a lot because a lot of the microchips right now use nanometers when... Um, when they make microchips, it's a distance between two uh, transistors that make our processors super fast. And nanometers are basically one, one billionth, so nine zeros of a unit. And that's one times 10 to the power of minus nine. So you can see there's a little pattern here, minus three, minus six, minus nine. So make sure that you know these at least. And for large numbers, we have three more. So we obviously have kilo, and this is things like kilograms, and that's small k, followed by a letter. And this is multiplied by a thousand, a thousand, and that's basically 1 times 10 to the power of 3. Then we have mega, and this is actually large, or capital M. Uh, so you can have things like uh, megahertz or megagrams, I guess. It's, it's something you don't really hear very often, but it's possible, so I just write mega, megagram. And that's multiplied by 1 million and equals to 1 times 10 to the power of 6. And you can probably guess the last one. This is Giga, uh, capital G, something we hear a lot today in our smartphones and computers, gigahertz. Um, let's just say this is going to be gigaliters, capital G, capital L. And this is multiplied by a billion, so nine zeros. And it's 1 times 10 to the power of 9. So these are the ones you should really, really, really know. So let's take a look at another sample problem from your book. And this one is a word problem where you have to first find something and then you have to convert it. So this is number 6 on page 47. And it's basically all about area. So you have a field that has certain length. So let's just draw the field first. It's going to be green because it's a field. It's going to be crooked because I can't draw. And this field is... 440 meters in length and 75 meters in width. And your question is, so what's the area of this, but in hectares, in HAs? So your answer at the end has to be in hectares. First step, let's find the area. This you should know already. Basically, cross multiply these two values. And it's 440 times 75, which is, let's do my super math, 33,000. So now all we have to do is convert, oh, and this is in what? This is obviously meter square, meter square. So you do have to write this, uh, these units, so don't forget, or otherwise you're gonna lose points on the test. And now we have to convert this into hectares. So this equals what in hectares? Now the conversion rate for this is uh, one hectare equals to 10,000 meters square so it's actually pretty easy to remember it's 10,000 meters square and we have 33,000 meters square so how many hectares is it well it's basically it's this divided by 10,000 which will give us 3.3 hectares and that's the final answer for this so it's 3.3 hectares and basically that's how you do all of these conversion questions. You'll definitely see quite a lot of them. So make sure you know how to convert things and how to use these tables. All right. Thank you for watching and good luck to you.